going on, you guys? A few things I want to talk about. A few things I want to talk about. And that's Devin Haney, George Gambosis, Javante Davis, Roley Romero, and Derek James saying that nobody cares about Terrence Crawford switching. That's some dumb shit. Hit that like button for your boy. Give me that HBO special. That's the Help a Brother Out special. We're going to roll to 20,000 subscribers. But Devin the Dream Haney, man, as we all saw, is on his way. Well, he's in Australia. He came a little early and, you know, get acclimated to the time zone difference and everything. I believe Australia is damn near like a whole day ahead or some shit like that. You know, they, they're pretty far ahead in the future. But Devin Haney's over there and his dad was denied access. And this is something I've been telling you guys early on going into this fight. Is they're going to make it hard as possible for Devin and Dream Haney. They're going to make it do, they're going to do whatever it takes to make sure he do not leave that country with all those belts. Right. And already, as soon as he got there, his father can't come. Right. And we've seen stuff like this happen before in boxing with Tyson Fury and his father. He can't leave the country because of his um, prior convictions. Man, you know, it's just it's just things that, you know, you did in your past could haunt you in the future. You know, you could be a totally different person from what you was back in your 20s. Um, and you look up 20 years later, you, you, you're about 45, 46 years old. And something that you did 20 years ago prevent you from being at the biggest moment of your son's career. Right. This is the biggest moment. This is the moment that they've been working for Devin Haney's whole life. And his dad can't be there. You know what I'm saying? And that's that, that's life. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, could they have let him in there for this fight? You know, possibly, yeah. I think they could have. But they're going to make it hard for Devin Haney. Devin Haney got to be careful. He got to have people out there that he trusts. Yoel Judah is um, out here replacing as the trainer. Ben Davidson, I don't believe. I think Ben Davidson is with him as well. I'm not sure if Ben Davidson is still with them. But um, I, I heard they some that he was denied access as well, or is that him coming over here? Whatever the case, um, these guys ain't able to move around. So, yeah, Devin Haney got to do what he got to do. He's experienced. He's confident. He's strong. He's disciplined. He's in shape. He should be ready to go and do what he got to do, whether he got his moral support from his father or not. Um, he should know that his dad is rooting for him from all the way across the world, right? So, yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hostile. It's going to be a lot of people. Everybody's going to be against him. Um, this could be a big moment for the young Devin Haney, man. This is a really, really, really big moment. And if he gets the job done, which I expect him to, um, it'll make the victory that much more, um, that much more better, right? Him beating Cambosis, hostile territory. You know, his trainer got, you know, had to had to turn back, right? Had to double back. And he out there alone, you know what I'm saying? He's training his father. So somebody he really trusts, somebody that's been there with him since day one. And now he ain't going to be there. But Devin Haney, you know, he's a man. He got to go do what he got to do. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this thing plays out for the next couple of weeks until this fight happens. You know, he's been over there pretty early. Hopefully he don't be over there mingling too much with the people or doing anything of the sort. You know, um, he should stay away from anything. Um, just don't, don't trust nothing. You know what I'm saying? They're going to do whatever it takes. And this is what I've been saying. When uh, we first heard about this fight, I've been telling people, like, look, man, this they're going to make it hard for Devin. You know what I'm saying? They're going to make it really – they already made it hard for him um, by him getting a fight, having to go over there in his rematch clause and all this stuff. So, yeah, um, we're going to see what happens. But Tank Davis, Broly Romero, man, something that I've been um, – It's interesting. It's an interesting fight, and I've been noticing a lot of other guys been kind of sharing the same sentiment. Yeah, so I'm not alone in being a um, little, little worried for Tank Davis in this fight against Rolando Romero. Rolando Romero is a bigger guy. Um, he's not the skilled. He's not the most skilled guy. I know, I know, I know. I know Tank Davis is the way better fighter, right? However, he's a smaller man. Um, and for what Roley lacks for in actual skills, he's a tough, mean little dude. You know what I'm saying? And Roley's pretty big right now, right? He's not looking like roley been looking. Roley's looking like he leveled up, right? He's looking like Broly Romero. You know what I'm saying? He he leveled up. He's looking strong. He's looking fast. 
And there's something that I've seen that he was doing that I feel that he will use in that fight against Tank Davis will make it so hard for Tank Davis if he applies this and if it's able to work. Also, he's got to be – it's got to be pertaining on him being able to deal with Tank Davis's power because for what Tank Davis lacks for in size and stature, he packs a big punch for a little guy. But Rolando Romero also packs a big punch. Who's the harder puncher? Tank Davis is a smaller guy. He – but they're about even in punching power, right? But who could take the punches? Who's going to be able to take it? Tank Davis is going to have to be on his A game against this guy. And it's unfortunate that it's a regular-ass fight. It's not a world title fight. There's no real significant meaning behind it. You know, this is how they've been moving Tank Davis's career. Now, Tank Davis himself came out and said that he never asked for the top guys. He never really asked. But they never put him in there with these guys either. Right, and now Tank Davis fighting another fight, another dangerous fight, and then a fight with Isaac Cruz. To a lot of people's surprise, it was a lot more competitive than people expected going in because nobody in the world knew who Isaac Cruz was. And now he's becoming a fan favorite because of his spirited performance against Tank Davis. He gave Tank Davis arguably his toughest fight. He didn't he didn't stop the pit bull. So now it's going to give guys like Roley Romero. Bigger guys like Roley Romero, who can all who can punch, a lot of confidence going in there with Tank Davis. Roley Romero all, already believes that Tank Davis ain't did nothing but beat up on much smaller men, right? He already got a lot of confidence going into this fight. Now, when they was face to face, he didn't have that same energy, but when they in that ring, it's gonna be a little bit different, right? It's gonna be a little bit different when they in that ring. But Tank Davis look like he's training his ass off, and, and rightfully so. The fans could say one thing. Oh, yeah, he's going to go knock him out. But Tank Davis training like he's prepared for war. He's training to punish Roley Romero. But I don't think this would be, I don't think it'll be a wise idea to go tooth and nail with Roley Romero because that's what Roley Romero is going to want. He's going to want you to stand right there in front of him going toe to toe with him so he can put his hands on you. But you got to use your angles. See, one thing Tank Davis, he has way better feet, way better foot speed. Uh, Roley Romero has really slow feet. He has bad feet. He can catch them all off balance. Okay? You catch them off balance all night. Boom, 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 boom. Hit them at angles. In and out, in and out. Boom, 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 boom. And that boom, boom, boom is them power shots Tank be throwing, them hooks, them hard shots he be throwing. Yeah, Roley ain't going to be able to take too many of those. He ain't. He's not. But if he is, if he is able to just walk Tank down and Tank Tank's power, we we can expect a lot, we can expect the unexpected people. I see a lot of guys coming out of videos saying they got Roley by KO. Roley might pull off the upset. I see a lot of people um, changing their tune with this fight. People paying attention. Roley Romero looks better than ever. Now we know he don't got the skill set of a Tank Davis, but for who he is, he looks better than ever. And he leveled up, and he's taking this guy seriously. And Tank Davis is too. But the size difference will be great. Once these guys step in that ring, once we see them at the weigh-ins, that size difference will be significant. Once again, we're letting Romero look like a full-blown junior welterweight. All right? So it's going to be an interesting fight, man. I'm rooting for my boy Tank. I like Roley, too. I think Roley's really good for boxing. But I'm rooting for my boy Tank. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I kind of worry about this fight, plus all the other stuff that's going on. Um, you know, Tank Davis potentially leaving me with the promotions and, you know, is you know, it's a dangerous fight for Tank Davis, man. It's, it's a dangerous fight for no reason. It's a high risk, low reward type of fight. A lot of fans early on going in saying this fight was stupid. Why is he fighting this guy? And Tank Davis, this is the situation he's in. You know, um, dealing with Mayweather promotion. This is the situation he's in. He's dealing with Roley, Roley Romero, a guy that's capable of pulling off some type of weird ass upset. He's an awkward, unorthodox dude that could punch. And really, for a guy that's starting at 17 years old, he's made it pretty far in the sport of boxing. You know, he, he he says he's now the strongest puncher, the biggest puncher in boxing. Um, now that Wilder's retired, even though speaking of Wilder, um, the Bronze Bomber may be coming back. And you know your boy Bushido's a big fan of, of the Bronze Bomber. Told you guys, he was a spark that ignited the heavyweight division. And now that he's gone, nobody's talking about heavyweight boxing no more. Well, you loved him or hated him, Deontay Wilder brought that division back. He was a fire that reignited to even Tyson Fury. And Tyson Fury is a guy that has motivation issues. He, he, he gets bored and he's unmotivated. Really, Deontay Wilder was the only guy, 
probably capable of beating Tyson Fury. But he's got a statue made in Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa. Hopefully I said that right. Tuscaloosa. In his honor, a statue made. You know what I'm saying? Salute to the Bronze Bomber, man. Hopefully he can come back. You know, it's looking like it may be Otto Wallin, maybe, for the vacant title. Come back, become a two-time champion, defend it a few times, and ride right off into the sunset, man. You know, I think Deontay Wilder still should go down as one of the um, the notable heavyweights, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, let's be honest. Who, who's really dealing with Tyson Fury? The guy that's 6'9", 300 pounds, that can move like that, and there's just this – that they, they could just do what he can do. Who 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 else in boxing history can really deal with that outside of maybe some of the guys from the nineties, early two thousands, like Lennox Lewis and some of those guys. But Tyson Fury is a hell of a um, guy to deal with for anybody. You know what I'm saying? And in this era of boxing, the only guy I believe that was capable of beating him was Deontay Wilder. You know what I'm saying? And I think fans got to respect Wilder at this point, though, considering even how that even though him taking a loss to Fury. And that chapter is closed. Um, the way he took it and the way he went on his shield of like a warrior, you have to respect the guy like Deontay Wilder. So I'm looking forward to seeing the, the Bronze Bomber come back. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, Roly Romero is looking really strong, looking really good, man. Some of the things he was doing, I'm gonna talk about it next week. But some things that he was doing, if he if he's able to do this against Tank Davis, if he's if he's able to do these things against Tank Davis, it's gonna make it really, really, really interesting. You know what I'm saying? If he's able to really deal with Tank Davis's power, if he's able to really walk Tank down, if he's able to do what I'm going to explain what he what I see him doing um, next week, if he's able to do this, it's going to be a really really dangerous night for Tank Davis. But uh, Derek James said that basically the switch hitting is some stupid shit, is some dumb shit. Um, it seems like anything, anytime anything about Terrence Crawford gets brought up, he it brings out the worst in Derrick James. It seems like he just he, his, his whole attitude changes. He don't like to talk about none of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Derrick James, he's human. He's entitled to his opinion. Um, a lot of people are saying he was hating. And right, he probably is hating. You know what I'm saying? You don't act like you never hated on nobody before. Everybody on the internet act like they so perfect. They never did this and that and third. You know what I'm saying? These guys out here putting themselves out there. And sometimes they be hating. Sometimes they slip up, say some goofy shit. Sometimes they, you know, they're human. So Derek James said they switch hands some dumb shit. But um, really, I think he's saying that because it's some shit that he's going to have to deal with. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a problem to deal with. It's a problem to find guys to prepare for. And unfortunately for him, his star fighter, Errol Spence Jr., um, next two potential opponents, and Terrence Crawford and John Ennis, are both switch hitters. So, yes, he's it's some dumb shit because I got to deal with this. Now I got to bring all kinds of sparring partners in, dudes that could potentially emulate these guys' styles. They both got some unique t unique styles. They both switch hitting and shit, right? So, yeah, Derek James is frustrated because switch hitting, well, he the way he broke it down, and I'm sure a lot of you guys by now went and go actually watch the video from Champ Side, but um, to see what he said verbatim because I was kind of paraphrasing in my um, initial video but he's more of he's more part of the technical aspect you know what i'm saying they like the tim duncan's a boxing really fundamental no flashing and stuff none of that switching all that stuff is foolishness i'm gonna just go up in there and beat you up that's what that's his that's his mentality you know what i'm saying i'm a, um i'm gonna strategically beat you down you know what i'm saying i'm not about to do nothing flashy i'm gonna keep my hands up i'm gonna pop my jab out you know what i'm saying i'm gonna keep my shoulders up I'm gonna be square i'm gonna be textbook as fuck and i'm gonna go beat you up that's that's his mentality, you know what I'm saying? Textbook. None of that switch hitting and shit. He said that's new shit. I'm like, it's not really new, you know what I'm saying? But not too many people could do it too well. Some dudes can do it for in spurts, some dudes can switch completely and fight a totally whole different side for a whole fucking half a duration of a fight. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I mean, switch hitting is a unique ability. You know, he's entitled to his opinion. You know, I'm not gonna say Derek James don't know what he's talking about and shit. He's entitled to it. He's just he's is in my opinion, I think it's more emotion. Well, his response, because if you saw it, you know, he kind of emotionally responded, you know what I'm saying, because it was about Terrence Crawford. And yeah, he said some stupid shit. And he put his hand on, like, hey, look, that's some dumb shit, and, you know, and it was funny, you know what I'm saying. He, it's some shit he got to deal with, you know what I'm saying. Terrence Crawford being a switch hitter, he's dangerous, bro. The more I think about the match and I think about it, you know what I'm saying, so I can give you guys my insight. Give you guys my insight, right? And I've been thinking about it. I'm like, man, this dude, Bud Crawford. I mean, Earl Spence is a, is a hell of a guy. Let's not get it twisted. Started boxing a little bit late. 
um, it, it is as a team, um, and did his thing right. Errol Spence is a stud, um, got thrown from a Ferrari. I did that's right, and then hopping right into the fire. Errol Spence is a hell of a guy, but I feel that Terrence Crawford just a like just another level. Um, the dude could do one inch punches and shit, all types of shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? That shit with Kell Brook. I said Bud Lee for a reason, bro. He's doing but one inch punches. I can't use that clip because they be liking to strike you for using that sometimes. You got to kind of tweak it. But that one inch punch, bro, he doing one inch punches. He doing flying dragon kicks. I mean, this dude, Bud Crawford, is the shit. Nah, but all bullshit aside, man. Um, I just think Terrence Crawford is gonna. I think he's a bad stylistic matchup, like I said before. Errol Spence Jr. is a hell of a guy, though. He's a machine. He's a stud. It won't. It shouldn't be an easy night for Terrence Crawford. I don't expect it to be easy, but I do think Crawford will get the job done. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. That's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, that doesn't mean I think Spence is trash. That don't mean I think he's a bum. I think he's a stud. I think he's a hell of a guy. Uh, but I just think Crawford's a notch higher. You know what I'm saying? They both can amp up them gears in the fight, but I think Crawford's better at making adjustments in the fight. Spence, his work rate is very consistent, and he can keep going. You know what I'm saying? Terrence Crawford is a very competitive guy. He's going to keep going. So it's going to be a hell of a fucking fight. But Derek James said switch hitting some dumb shit. This is just because it's some shit that he got to deal with. Like, subscribe. Hot your boy. Peace out.